Thanks for joining us here at Kalkine. I'm Rose Jacobs. On February 24, Russia began a military invasion into Ukraine. While it wasn't surprising, it was shocking, given the relative peace Europe had been in for nearly a century. So how did we get here? Let's backtrack and look at previous developments and possible Russian motives to get to the bottom of it. Formerly the second largest republic of the USSR, Ukraine declared independence on the end of the Cold War, August 24, 1991. In 2012, former KGB member Vladimir Putin became president of Russia. One possible catalyst that seems to lead here is the Euro Maiden protests erupted on November 21 of 2013, when seemingly out of the blue, Ukraine President Viktor Yunukovych decided to abandon the European Union, Ukraine Association Agreement, in favour of closer ties to Russia. One of the reasons that fueled the protesters was perceived corruption. The protests refused to fizzle out, turned violent in February 2014 with many fatalities and resulted in Transparency International naming Mr Yanukovych as corrupt and ultimately culminated in the president's ousting as he fled to Russia. Russia never truly accepted the new Ukraine government, and now there is speculation that Putin may reinstall Yanukovych in Kiev. Moving to the annexation of Crimea, soon after, Russia annexed Crimea nearly seven decades earlier and way before Ukraine's independence in 1954. Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev gave control over Crimea over to Kiev, then under the USSR. Upon independence, both staked their claim for the Black Sea Fleet. The actual troops, too, it seemed, were divided as to where their loyalties lay. Russia had bases in Crimea, including 12,000 personnel. So what about Donetsk and Luhansk? Beginning right in April 2014 itself, pro-Russian separatist groups seized parts of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. After invading, one of the first things Putin did was to recognize the states of Donetsk and Luhansk. And that brings us to where we are now. And the last strike was NATO membership. It seems to particularly rub Russia the wrong way when former Soviet states take up membership in NATO. In 2004, Bulgaria, Romania, Slovenia and Slovakia were admitted into NATO, along with three Baltic states. The three Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, were formerly Soviet states and the first to share a border with Russia. Lithuania shares a border with Belarus. Finland, which has a sizable border with Russia, is also mulling over joining NATO, as is Sweden. Former Soviet border states are reportedly referred to as near abroad by some Russian politicians, and it has been seen in the past that it risks Russia when they don't act in their former master's best interests. Ukraine was the second biggest republic of the USSR, secondly only to Russia. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky has signaled his ambition to make Ukraine a NATO member. Russia does not want Ukraine to join NATO. Under the purview of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, the war website claims Putin has pursued pushing the false historical narrative that Russians and Ukrainians make one nation. It further strikes a tone of self-determination, stating that the path it has chosen is one of democratic development, reform and European integration. The conclusion is this. The global community seems almost unanimously supportive of Ukraine since the invasion. If you would like any more information, then take a look at the website, calkindmedia.com. And thank you again for joining us here at Calkine. I'm Rose Jacobs.